Welcome to today's news talk at the International News Channel. I'm Hazar Alsava. The Canadian government held two emergency national summits this year. On July 21st, they focused on anti-Semitism, and on July 22nd, they focused on Islamophobia. Following the hate-based terrorist attack against a Muslim family in London, Ontario, the MPs voted in favor of a motion calling for such a summit to address Islamophobia in Canada. To discuss the National Summit on Islamophobia, we are joined today by Imam Kamrul Hansen. He is a religious scholar, interfaith activist, peace activist, and author of 10 published books. Thanks for joining us, Imam Hansen. My pleasure. What was your reaction to the National Summit on Islamophobia? I think after so many incidents of attack on, on the Muslims, uh, at least this gave a confidence in the Muslim community that government on parliamentary level is taking care and trying to remove the fear in general, and particularly those who are directly affected. Uh, it would help them to uphold uh, their stamina, their happiness, being a Canadian citizen in this country. And do you think that a national summit on Islamophobia was needed? If somebody would have asked me, is there any need for national uh, conference on Islamophobia? I would have said this time, yes, it was needed just only to console uh, the people, uh, especially the Muslims, as well as other minorities who are often affected by uh, racial attacks, by uh, Islamophobic attack. Uh, it will give a confidence in the, uh, among the people uh, that uh, yes, government is taking care of them, whether it will impact in general, well, whether it will change anything about uh, Islamophobia, I'm not sure of. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, do you anticipate that the summit may bring about actual policy changes? It is very difficult to bring the policy changes because all the laws are already there in the Canadian Constitution to deal with these. All these exercises, what has been there, it, I think it is more of a cosmetic nature, but it was necessary. I would still support that so that the people, those who are directly affected, they will recover from the shock, especially what happened in London, what happened in Hamilton, and what here has been happening since 2011, it was necessary. Mm -hmm. And speaking of which, what do you think was the main catalyst for the national summit? I think it is more of a political uh, because different parties, they have their interests and the vote bank interests too. But at the same time, it was good that all the parties uh, were uh, Part of that, though many complain uh, of not getting any invitation in there, uh, in general, uh, it will show that Canada is looking after the minorities in this country. And by doing so, there will be a message also among the hate mongers from different communities. The hate mongers could be from Muslims, uh, Jews, Christians, or maybe uh, some atheists also, that the government is taking into account against the hate groups and they will be apprehended if their activities do not stop. And not only that, it has to uh, give a message to anyone that hate mongering or any sort of uh, hate in this country is not allowed. Canada should be defined hate free. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that the National Summit on Anti-Semitism and the National Summit on Islamophobia were held consecutively? Well, I think it is, again, you have to balance with positive and the negative. Uh, since uh, Muslim community is under uh, the threat of being hated, and we all know that the Jewish community is not equally, but they were hated long back. So anti-Semitism, already existed in there. Islamophobia was the concept, it, it was near there, uh, there before, but since the two sides, one is uh, demanding that there shouldn't be any Islamophobia, and there is no Islamophobia, the other side is uh, trying to convince the general public that Islamophobia does exist. Now, 
Unfortunately, I have to say that Islamophobia does exist now. A lot could be done to remove the fear of Islamophobia in this country. Mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts on the National Summit on anti-Semitism? Well, uh, it's good exercise. We already have a process against uh, anti-Semitism. We also have a, a good process, but not yet concluded about uh, Islamophobia too. But the government of Canada is working against all the hate groups, irrespective of which group is who and what origin they have. And besides the national summit, what other steps are needed by the government in order to address Islamophobia in Canada? I think first of all, if somebody asks me, and the government should also emphasize on that, Islamophobia does not exist from nothing. There are two aspects of Islamophobia in this country. First of all, the direct responsibility should be taken by the Muslim community what triggers Islamophobia. Muslim community has to be very active, proactive against all form of phobic uh, symptoms in this country. I know Canadian constitution allows everybody to entertain their own culture, their own religion without fear. That's fine. I support that. But at the same time, any trigger which is prompted because of some misbehavior from a community, the community should retro retrospect themselves and that cause has to be removed. On the other side, the government of Canada would also have uh, some sort of control, not on the freedom of expression, but on what leads to violence in this country. Sometimes in social media, the continual bombardment again against a community, whether it is a Jewish community or the Muslim community. And we often see also in the social media, a lot of hate being happening without violence. Such things also, we have to have a procedure, a mechanism by which the hate of such kind should be apprehended in a way that the freedom of speech is not uh, degraded, but also at the same time, it shouldn't lead to hate in the Canadian society. Mm -hmm. And now you've attended the National Summit on July 22nd. Where did the National Summit succeed and where did it fail, do you think? I think, uh, first of all, government should have taken everybody, especially those stakeholders, those who are affected directly. The same time, government should have invited each and every political party beside, in, uh, should have invited those who are existing as legal entity in this country to come and give their opinion also. I think it was not comprehensive in the sense that it has not been able to succeed inviting each and every section and also listen to them too. Mm -hmm. And in your opinion, is there anything that wasn't addressed at the National Summit on Islamophobia that should have been on the agenda? I think uh, they try to cover each and every aspect of that, but the emphasis, I think, should be on the communities who are affected, the Muslim community, the Jewish community, and other, other communities who are being affected because of the hate, uh, they should also respect themselves and see what could they do uh, avoiding such hate in public places. This is number one. Number two, by maintaining the freedom of speech, freedom to um, uh, practice the culture and also freedom to uh, um, uh, uh, practice the religion, the emphasis should also be there. There are certain segments in the society who do not want to mix together. We cannot force them to mix with everybody. So people can choose whom they talk, where they live, and where they want to replace. Those considerations should be in the public domain and they should decide. We should not uh, um, uh, press the public opinion uh, against it. Everybody has a freedom. Everybody should entertain the freedom. Canadian, uh, Canadian uh, are uh, in a free country, a free society. Everybody has got the right. Charter of rights are there. All the political parties are part of it. So 
the freedom of speech uh, is very important it should be there but it should never lead to violence or subjugation or hate against anyone and you mentioned that islamophobia is on the rise uh, do you think that islamophobia however is entrenched in canadian society i do not think so if Islamophobia was entrenched in this society, I and you would not be here. We are here because the Canadian society appreciates multiculturalism. They accept different uh, religious practices. Everybody has got the equal rights, but somebody somewhere, somehow they don't uh, like such freedom. So people want to curtail or dominate other cultures or uh, the, the freedom of expression in this country. No, we should say no to that. And everybody has their own ri uh, rights. And because of they have the right, it does not mean that somebody should curtail the rights of others. Mm -hmm. And besides the Muslim community, as you mentioned, uh, what steps can non-Muslim Canadians take to support their Muslim counterparts in a fight against Islamophobia? I am an interfaith uh, religious activist. I always invite my uh, Jewish brothers and sisters, my Christian brothers and sisters to cooperate on common ground. We, I as a Muslim, I can say that we are the children of Abraham. We believe in 10 commandments. Let us cooperate together. All the religious communities, especially the children of Abraham, those who call themselves Jews or, or Christians or, or Muslims, we believe in one God. There is no deity but one God. We believe in Elohim. We, we believe in Allah. We believe in God. The God of Abraham is the common God of all these three communities. Even other communities like Sikhs and, and others, they all believe in one God. It's a matter of uh, distraction that people keep on changing and they change to many different sects, including the Muslims too. But Islam is the same religion which was brought by Adam and Eve, practiced by Noah, practiced by Abraham, practiced by Moses, practiced by uh, 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 other, other prophets, including the last messenger prophet of God, Muhammad, peace be upon him. Thank you, Imam Hansen, for joining us today. You are welcome, and thank you very much for taking me into account. And thank you to our viewers for joining us. You're watching the International News Channel. I'm Hazar al -Saba. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications to stay up to date on our latest videos.